G'day, Glenn Morris here from the Smart Energy Lab. And today, it's time to unbox this Hoy Miles microinverter, but it's not so micro. So let's get into it. Well, uh, a lot of boxes here and uh, Let's see what's going on. You know, it's kind of like Christmas. You are open the little things first. Well, it is nearly Christmas actually, as of the recording date. So let's have a look what we've got in here. So these will be trunking cables for connecting one microinverter to another. Now that's one of the, the, the beauties of a microinverter system is it's incredibly quick and easy to install and virtually idiot proof because there's no wiring. We're just connect, plugging stuff in and these, these plugs lock in position so that you can't accidentally be unplugged. So I've got a couple of those. So they're the interconnectors. Now this is something a little bit controversial because really it's uh, not legal in Australia and New Zealand, but uh, in some countries, so I believe in the Netherlands and Germany and maybe others, you can tell me, um, you're allowed to directly plug into a wall outlet, a microinverter system up to a certain power level. So caveat, check your local regulations whether you're allowed to do this, but that's what this is. This is a plug it into a wall outlet, plug this into the microinverter, and now you've got your very own self-installed uh, solar power system. Of course, you'll need some solar panels. Okay, let's see what comes next. So, connectors, lots of them. End caps, ceiling caps, disconnecting tool, uh, trunking connector, extension connector. Wow, so this here is the tool you require for disconnecting uh, these from each other. So that's why it's relatively safe in that you can't unplug it under load without using a tool like this. It's also got a little spanner for probably for tightening up stuff. Um, and we have a lot of connectors in here. So this looks like a three-way connector, so uh, in, uh, in, out. So let's say you're branching off in the middle and uh, you have connected your, let's see if I can work out this, how this goes. That's male, that's female. Oh, those are two male. I've got to get the genders right here. Right, so what we got there. Wow, <laughs> there's a lot of this little extender. This is just like <laughs> playing with a kid's toy where you try to work out what goes with what. Uh, that will be a, um, a, it's a gland that you can run your own cable into this. So if you're connecting onto a, a trunking system, so if we've got a trunking system like this and we want to connect this onto here, where are we? That's the wrong one. Okay. Get to the point where I might even have to read the manual. Okay, two of those. I'm getting there. And I think what I'm missing is the microinverter because the type of connectors we have here. And we've got some pins. So that's a pin connector. I won't open that one. And this looks like an end cap. Yes, this would be an end cap. 
because at the end of your trunking cable, where you've got no more uh, inverters to plug in, you'll need to blank off uh, the connector at the end. So that's there's your blanking uh, terminal at the end. Okay, right, and we've got a little plug pack here. I think this is to do with something else in the boxes. So this is a demo kit for me. Um, I think you would not normally order three different sized microinverters, but uh, that's what I've got here. Oh yes, this is a for um, Australian New Zealand type plug, uh, an adapter. So I've got a feeling it's something to do with what's in this box, which is the data transfer unit or DTU as it's known in the manual. Now these, these data transfer units use what's called a sub 1G wireless solution, which is a really um, tough industrial communication protocol. So it's not your, your standard weak signals. These signals can punch through walls. In fact, I've got one of these DTUs already installed um, with a, a previous model of the Hoy Miles microinverter. And uh, there is two shipping containers, a corrugated iron wall, uh, uh, between the microinverters and it gets through what you know that's five levels of steel <laughs> and about 50 meters of distance in a straight line and it gets through to this from the microinverter so yeah it's pretty good at penetrating or re reflecting through um, uh, difficult environments so this is the DTU it has a a little bracket too for wall mounting which uh, <laughs> last time I had a go at it I got quite confused about how it clipped on so we'll see if I can get it right this time. There we go. So that's your little wall mount bracket there if you wanna kind of do it like this and have your Hall Miles DTU on the wall. Very nice. Uh, power supply for it. And it's got its own little USB adapter. So it runs off five volts USB, nice. And that's where the adapter for Australia and New Zealand will come in. So there's your um, uh, two-pin sort of US style plug. And there we go. And we have a small terminal block here. Now, there's a RS-485 um, terminals on the back. If I can get this around the right way. So no doubt there will be some uh, communication uh, with devices. I'm not sure what that is. I'll have to read the manual. And looking in the back here, we've got DRM, Ethernet, USB reset, um, sub 1G antenna, and Wi-Fi, because it connects through to your um, uh, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. So yeah, that's right. This is the sub 1G antenna, and this is the Wi-Fi antenna. Pretty cool. So that's the DTU. Now let's get to the main event, because, you know, like it is at Christmas time, time to open presents. So let's see what we've got in here. So starting with the smallest box. A step-by-step -step instructions. Nice little uh, quick install guide here, like that. And here is the first microinverter. <laughs> wow, so this is designed to take uh, one PV module, here we go. So it's got a pair of PV connectors ready to go. And uh, this unit here, which is the uh, HMS 501T, is rated at 500 VA. Wow, so depending on power factor, up to like around 500 watts, um, that's pretty cool. The maximum input voltage is 65 volts. So it really suits some of those higher voltage modules that are starting to come out. And in terms of uh, MPPT range, it'll start down as low as 16 volts. And it'll keep tracking up to 60 volts MPPT. Uh, the startup voltage is 22, so pretty much early in the day, as soon as there's some light on the panel, this thing will turn on. It's got a, a continuous input rating of 16 amps and a maximum short circuit current rating of 25 amps. Now, why am I making a big deal about that? So in New Zealand and Australia, we have a standard for PV systems, AS NZS 5033. And it has always required that you have a 1.25 times safety margin on the maximum current rating of your PV array. In this case, the PV array is one panel. 
Now, why is there a 1.25 times safety margin? It's because panels are tested at 1,000 watts per square metre. Now, that isn't an absolute, but the output in terms of current is more or less proportional to the irradiance from the sun. So if you live in the southern hemisphere, particularly where the skies are clear like in New Zealand and parts of Australia, you'll get more than a thousand watts per square meter. So your so-called you know, short circuit current rating of your panel tested at a thousand watts is not a maximum. On top of that, um, you'll get positive tolerance modules. So modules these days are often plus three, sometimes even plus five percent positive tolerance. So you could get a whole bunch of plus fives. And on top of that, you get a bit of thermal derating uh, because of the way cables are installed or protection equipment. So that 1.25 times means that a panel that puts out, uh, say, uh, 12 amps, actually, in terms of short circuit rating, needs an input rating on the microinverter of 15 amps. Well, this one, 25 amps. I don't think there's any panels that I've got around here. I've even got some 660 watt panels. Um, and they put out, I think, a short circuit current rating of over 17 amps. They'll still work with this. That's pretty impressive. But anyway, this is the uh, single input. So one MPPT, put that aside. I'm trying to guess in terms of size. Which one's next? Okay, once again, a quick install guide. And this one comes with a handy carry handle, <laughs> just joking, for mounting onto your rails. And it's got two inputs. And there's the little stub antenna for communicating with your DTU. Uh, it's very solid. So um, I, I'm quite familiar with this design, it's all metal. It has a small status light on the front here, which if you happen to have these located somewhere where you can see them from the ground, which is not a, not very common, but if you're gonna tilt a ray, often uh, putting these on the back of the panels, you can see the status light. So it's really got two colors, red or green. Green mean it's working, red mean it's currently in standby uh, or a fault condition. And on the back here, we've got the specs. So this is the HMS 802T. I guess the, the 2T is the uh, number of uh, inputs, so it's a dual MPPT device. That's important to understand because that means these can be different panels. You can have, you know, um, a 300 watt panel here and a 400 watt panel here. Uh, so 800 watts, uh, it's 800 VA is its continuous power rating in terms of AC output. Uh, it has, as I said, two inputs and each of them are rated at 14 amps continuous current and a short circuit rating of 25 amps. Wow, that's impressive. Uh, similar startup voltages, uh, six, 22 volts for startup, maximum voltage 65. So that's the HMS 800 for two panels. But wait, there's more. <laughs> and big Bertha here. Whoa, quick start guide getting used to those. Packaging and, whoa, let's get into it. That is one big micro. It's kind of funny they're called micros, but when you think about it, this is a four MPPT. Four MPPTs in a package this small is pretty amazing. Uh, it's rated at 2000 VA. I can remember installing two kilowatt inverters that weighed like 30 kilos. <laughs> this, I don't know, four, something like that. Three or four, it's pretty light. So uh, really changes the game in terms of cost and speed. Remember one of the big advantages of microinverters is that there is only an AC cable on the roof going down to your switchboard. Uh, so there's no inverter down at the wall, um, down, at, down at the switchboard or on the wall of your house. All the electronics are under the panels uh, under the roof. Now, some will say, well, that's a pretty harsh place to install equipment. But companies like Hoy Miles have been testing and manufacturing um, microinverters for a long time, and they've learned how to make a product that's durable under a range of harsh conditions. These are installed all around the world, from freezing cold in Europe to boiling hot in the tropics. So they're rated for outdoor installations. The um, ratings again on this are the same as these two in terms of uh, the startup voltage, 22 volt startup voltage, MPPT range uh, 16 to 60 volts, uh, a short circuit current rating per input of 25 amps. Now, why haven't we been using these all along? 
actually in Australia and New Zealand we had a problem. Until our PV ray standard got updated, we were sort of stuck with this problem where you couldn't have an inverter more than 350 watts. It was a kind of a weird thing. 350 watts max for microinverters. After that, you basically had to put DC isolators on every input and no one would want to do that. But we, we updated our standards and now there is no, uh, no 350 watt limit anymore. So it doesn't matter what the size is, as long as the input, now this is for Australia and New Zealand, remember, as long as the input is less than 120 volts, uh, it can be basically connected without a load breaking switch on the input to the microinverters. Because I guess the thinking there is that you can actually unplug these uh, and they are safe to unplug even when they're on load. Don't do it because you're probably going to damage the contacts. How do you stop that from happening? You just turn off the supply to the microinverters. So down at the switchboard where your AC breaker will be, just turn that off and there'll be no current flowing through these. So this model is the HMS 2004T, um, taking four panels. Once again, it's got the status line on the front. Um, this is designed to be mounted underneath the panels, basically out of the sun, and you've got your trunking system to connect it all up with. So rather than me doing all this on a table, we're actually going to do an installation very shortly uh, in the lab, out in the sun, with some real panels. Anyway, that's just unboxing the Hoy Miles microinverters, the, the one, the two, and the four input. Thanks very much for watching.